Did I hear a maiden sigh, please be mine. That's the hope that makes thee my valentine. So romantic. Tantalizing. Peace work. Oh, the day will come when both my beloved girls will receive such cards from eligible suitors. Ma. Well, I would be happy to receive one. And overjoyed if it were one you had made, Mama. <laughs> Dear Daphne, you do say such felicitous things. You shall receive one, I'm certain of it. And I don't exclude you, Denise. I can picture you both married to the most outrageously handsome young gentleman who both cherish and adore you. Well, Daphne is getting married on Saturday, Mama. Denise, I was not referring to that, dear. I was speaking about your partners for life. Oh, but Mama, I've said... Uh, that's enough, dear. You'll only upset your sister. Oh, it's all right, Mama. Darling, I know it's a sacrifice, but where would we three be without it? In the poor house, now spare us that. Daphne said it's all right, Mama. She isn't protesting. Well, it's of no consequence to me, this time. That's my Daphne. It's nothing. It's a mere interlude. It'll be over in a few days. And none of us want to go on doing this drudgery for the rest of our lives. Sexton, you again, you old troll. I advise you against insulting the cloth. I was insulting the crows. Now, what are you fussing about this time, eh, Kermit? Who owns the plot in the corner by the Stapleton grave? Well, no one that I know of. Who want to find themselves next to one of that gang for all eternity? I could tell you a few tales about them Stapletons. Yes, 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 that was before my time. I want a grave dug there. Oh, yes. Who's joined the majority, then? No one yet. Oh, up to your old tricks again, Curate. You wanted another grave dug for yourself, are you? You don't understand. I've been feeling all overish lately, distinctly seedy. Yeah, just because I used your grave last week for poor old Job Smith, rest his soul. It was reserved for me. Yes, three months ago, when you said you wouldn't last another fortnight. I'm getting used to your loony ways, you know. I'm a very sick man. Confound it, I work here. If I can't have some say in the matter, who can? Them women getting you down, is it? Yeah, three of them under the same roof and not one of them your wife. Enough to drive any man bar me, I reckon. Still, there'll be one less after Saturday, won't there? When young Daphne goes up the aisle, so let's leave the grave digging till after that, shall we? I'm ordering you to dig it this afternoon. Or explain why not to the vicar. That is a hazard. Thought it was you, Thackeray. Oh, morning, Sarge. <clears throat> What's all the sprucing up for? Off to a fancy frisk, are you? Or is it the Lord Mayor's banquet? Uh, no, Sarge. Uh, my suit needs a few new creases, that's all. You're not up for promotion. What do you think? Appearance in court as a witness? Uh, no, Sarge. Not an assignation with one of the fair sex. Oh, chance would be a fine thing. I'm stumped, then. I give up. Right you are, Sarge. I'll see you in the morning. Funeral? Wedding? Ha-ha, <laughs> that's it. Who's getting hitched? Uh, not me, Sarge. Well, I suppose I'll have to tell you anyway. I'm going to be the groom's best man. Good Lord. No disrespect, Thackeray, but who's asked you to be his best man? A bloke called Henry Russell. He's a friend of me old days. Didn't know Thackeray Senior was still going strong. Well, he's not a very good old Sarge. But in the old days, he used to have a few beers with Henry down at the Angel. Well, Henry made enough money from his cabinet making to retire to the country. He lives in Rygate now, and he's getting married on Saturday. How old is he? 64. The bride's 27. And you're to be the best man? Well, he asked me Dad first, but I wrote him a letter telling him he couldn't manage the journey, so he asked me instead. Yeah, the poor old fellow is just about alone in the world. But he set his heart on a proper wedding, so I said I'd do it. Saturday, Rygate. What train are we catching? We? Well, you said Henry was alone in the world and needs support. Well, you wouldn't go all that way just for old Henry, would you? No. But to see his best man, that's a spectacle I don't intend to miss. Yes, baby. 
and it isn't in position, but you'll get to like Daphne. I know she's very sympathetic. We're uncommon lucky fellas, you and me. Yeah. Little more ham, Daphne. You need to keep up your strength. <laughs> Denise, really? Denise. Sarcasm is the language of the devil. Mama. It was merely encouraging dear Daphne to eat. Well, she must neglect herself. Well, her continuing health is vital to our future, is it not? I must eat meat so that you shall have cake. Personally, I hate wedding cake. Never all gets eaten. No, Henry isn't partial to it either. Do you mean cake? Oh. Denise! <laughs> I've just had a thought. What Henry should have is an angel cake. <laughs> oh, can't a man enjoy his meat tea without a chorus of tittering? Sorry, Uncle Ezra. Ezra, is Oops. the settlement signed and witnessed? Settlement? Settlement. All these things to attend to before the wedding, and I have other duties in the parish, you know. And I'm far from well. Is it done, Ezra? Yes, yes. I saw Henry uh, uh, rustle with the solicitor yesterday. Daphne gets the lot every brass farthing. It really is in questionable taste to ask a man to make his will a week before the wedding. Nonsense! A man has a duty to make provision for the, for the unforeseen. My Mortimer did, rest his soul. Oh, and saddled his poor brother with three troublesome women. <sighs> well, troublesome we may be, but where would you be without us? The Church of England couldn't keep you in shoe leather. Besides, You'll be down to two women after Saturday. Yes, but for how long? Henry doesn't look very durable to me. Why do they always have to be so infernally old? The heart has its reasons. Did you confirm that Henry has no relatives? No relatives. Oh, there's no trouble there, then. <laughs> there's uh, one thing that's new, though. A best man. A best man? Someone local? Uh, oh, from London, I understand. London, that's all right then. Denise and I can take care of him. Mama, let's see what the teacups say about Saturday. Oh, yes, please, Mama. Very well then, you know what to do. Daphne first. Thank you, dear. Oh, dear, what trouble I see. A beautiful wedding to a very short marriage. I see a cat walking behind a coffin now. What can that mean, I suppose? <laughs> Denise, let me see yours. Thank you, dear. This is very interesting. A stranger is coming into your life. He's very smart and very mysterious. From London, surely. Why should she get a mysterious stranger from London? Denise, your turn will come, darling. Haven't I always promised each of you a handsome, energetic young husband? When our circumstances permit? Mama, it seems that I've done more than my share in trying to improve our circumstances. I know, darling, it's very vexing. But nature has a way of adjusting the balance. You remember when you were young and Denise had two bouts of chicken pox and you didn't get it at all? It's not the same thing. It lasts about as long, dear. Who is it, Denise? The sexton. Oh. He wants a shilling for digging a grave. Oh, my stars and garters. Yes. Ezra, what have you done? They are not even married yet. What are you talking about? This grave is for me, mine. Yours? Give the sexton his money, Denise. Why will you do this, you old lunatic? It gives me peace of mind to know where I'll be lying. I've been... Well below par lately. Sinking fast. You'll be well and truly sunk by the time I've finished with you. You need me at the wedding. More's the pity. If I could think of a way of managing without you... Perhaps we should postpone. No. Never quit certainty for hope. The wedding will take place as arranged. The bride, taking the bridegroom's arm, goes into the vestry. Signatures are then affixed and a registration made. After which the marriage pair enter their carriage and retire to the breakfast. What about the best man? You look after the bridesmaids. Bridesmaids? And pay the sexton for his services. 
and hand the guests into their carriages, making sure that you're the last to leave. And if there are any speeches at the breakfast... Speeches? Oh, stress. Rygate, I think. All the luck in the world, sir. It's a great adventure, and may you be blessed with offspring in abundance. Daphne, isn't it time you finished dressing? I'll help you. Oh, what a flutter. I've never felt like this before. It's all going to go wrong, I know it. Silly. How could it? Mama has everything under control. But has she? She didn't know about the best man. Don't worry. I'll take care of him. She hadn't heard about Uncle having a grave dug. That was a horrid surprise. <laughs> he's always doing it. Everyone knows he's dotty. <laughs> oh, there's a hook gone. And can you repair it? No, there isn't time. No one will notice. Let's have a look at you. Oh, there's a mark. <gasps> Mama will have 40 fits. I'll use a bouquet to hide it. I wish we could call the whole thing off. Oh. Uncle's gone to the church and good riddance. Oh, my dear, what a picture. You look lovelier each time I see you. I could burst with pride. And Denise, the perfect bridesmaid. You know what they say about a happy bridesmaid. You won't have long to wait, I'm certain. What about me, Mama? How long will I have to wait? In the teacups, darling. Now, come along. It's nearly half past. Oh, I do love weddings. Think she'll like it, Pippin? Oh, I do hope she does. My word, there he is. Yes, that's all right. Glasses, sherry. Yes. Gentlemen, how good of you to come. Remember me, Mr. Russell? But of course I do, Edward. And you're Edward's friend, Mr. Cribb. Mr. Russell. Uh, come in, both of you. <laughs> Take a glass of sherry. You're not on duty today. Edward is not too much for him. Oh, well, I think one glass won't do any harm. How smart you both look. Buttonholes as well. So kind of you. Oh, I got them from a flower stall in Victoria Station, but... Uh, Mine's wilted already. Mine uh, snapped off. Really? I did happen to get some in just in case. Ah, capital. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Sherry for you both, then. You'll forgive me if I don't join you, but I'm feeling just a little... Nervous? <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> Ridiculous, isn't it? <laughs> you must think me an old fool. Certainly too old to be entering matrimony for the first time. I rarely thought life had passed me by. I do hope I'm doing the right thing. By Daphne, I mean. To Daphne. And Henry. Oh, thank you. Have you known the young lady long, sir? Oh, barely a year. I was invited up to the curate's house to mend an antique chair. I'm a cabinet maker, you know, and that was how we met. I made this chair for Daphne's wedding present. Do you think she'll be pleased? It's a splendid gift, sir. Oh, it's nearly time for the service, sir. Perhaps we should be moving. There speaks your best man, Mr. Russell. Got to get there before the bride. <laughs> Please call me Henry. Everybody does. <laughs> well, come on, Pippin. This is it at last. Oh, I wish I could stop the fluttering in my stomach.
Dearly beloved, we are gathered together here in the sight of God and in the face of this congregation to join together this man and this woman in holy matrimony, which is an honorable estate instituted of God in the time of man's next? Your speech now, thank you. That, Reverend? Oh, thank you, thank you. Oh, ah. Hmm? Hmm. Ladies and gentlemen, the toast to the happy couple, to uh, Henry and Daphne. Henry and Daphne. Henry and Daphne. Cake is delicious, Daphne, as usual. I beg your pardon, miss? Oh, I said it's a usual thing for Daphne's cake to be delicious. She's such a splendid cook. Yes, Mr. Cribb, my daughters cook like angels. I've always considered it a wifely duty to cook well. Do you like good food? Tolerably well, ma'am. By the look of you, you haven't had much. <laughs> I don't know if you're married, but if you are, she doesn't believe in overfeeding you, does she? <laughs> <laughs> My congratulations, Henry. Oh, thank you. I say, it was jolly decent of you to come all this way with young Edward. Young Edward? Ah, oh, well, someone has to keep him in order. So like his father, a favourite with the fair sex. Really? I do like to see a man enjoy his food. <laughs> Are you partial to mutton pie, Mr. Cribb? Not usually, ma'am. Ah, you'd change your mind if Denise had cooked it. My girls do all the cooking here. Except the soups. Mama excels at those, especially oxtail. Denise, you could say Mama's oxtail soup is positively the last word. Really? I look forward to sampling that. <laughs> yes. Denise, will you go and see if the carriage has come, dear? More wine, ma'am. Just a suspicion, please. Thank you. Uh, Have you known Henry long? Uh, no, ma'am. Uh, it's my father he knows. I'm standing in for him on this occasion. He's getting on a bit now and uh, rather frail. Oh, I do hate to see an old gentleman in decline. Is the weakness in his legs? Uh, yes, ma'am. Worse when it goes to the brain. What do you want, Ezra? Oh, the sciatic is playing up again. Uh, Mr. Thackeray, I wonder if you and your friend would execute a small favour for me. Uh, removals, in fact. Oh, only too glad, sir. Yes, I do hope you're not up to your morbid tricks again, Ezra. It is Daphne's wedding day, you know. He keeps a coffin in the woodshed. I simply want some help with uh, Daphne's portmanteau. It needs putting on the carriage. Oh. We'll attend to it at once, sir. Uh, Mr. Cribb? Rescued you from the ladies anyway, twittering on about their culinary skills. Women have far too much to say. Yes, St. Paul appreciated sagacious man. Women should learn in silence with all subjection. 1 Timothy 2.11. Excuse me, sir, that's the trunk, is it? Uh, yes. Uh, I'll take the uh, hat box. I have to be careful. The heart, you know. Heart? You mentioned sciatica downstairs. Oh, yes, a dangerous combination. Right, Mr. Thackeray. We'll soon have this downstairs. <laughs> As you say, Mr. Cribb. Oh. Uh, mustn't reveal the secrets of a lady's wardrobe. <laughs> uh. 
the gardener, sir? Oh, no. It's a battleground. Weeds everywhere. It's too much for me. The heart of the sciatica. Yes. I have to pay the sexton to dig it over. Oh, sexton should be used to spade work. <laughs> uh, oh, uh, it's nice in the summer, though. Fox loves as tall as yourself. Careful of them, sir. Poisonous. Really? Oh, we always have fox gloves in our gardens. It's a very popular plant with the ladies. I thought fox gloves were for insincerity. We're about to leave now. I can't thank you enough for being my groomsman, Edward, and you, Mr. Cribb, for all your help. I'm not sure whether we shall meet again. In that case, but... Edward and I had better kiss the bride. Oh. <laughs> Good luck. Bye. Funny thing, really. What's that? Them two getting married. I don't mind telling you, I had my doubts when I first heard about it. There's no fool like an old fool, I said to myself. I changed my mind now. Why? I've seen them together. Him so happy, and young Daphne as calm as if she'd been through it all before. <laughs> Made me quite misty-eyed in church. Oh, I'm not a sentimental man, as you know. Is Henry in funds? Eh? Money, what's he worth? Oh, not much, I reckon. He owns a cottage, true. He's only a cabinet maker in his working life. Why? Oh, it doesn't matter. The Japanese people haven't got much. How do you know? Well, she's wearing a second hand wedding dress. Didn't you notice? Or was your eyes on someone else? I wasn't sleeping, dearest. I never sleep by day. I always believe in keeping active. <laughs> I learned that from my father. Did I tell you he lived to be 91? You don't say. Mine was dead before 40. Oh, how distressing. Was it an accident? No, it was no accident. Henry, my love. <laughs> Mama has invited us for dinner on Sunday. Oh. Is that so? You don't sound very pleased at the prospect. Oh, no. Don't misunderstand me, dearest. Your mother's a charming lady. It's just that I'm very reluctant to give up any time alone with you. Oh, Henry, you say the sweetest things. <laughs> of course. We'll do just as you want. Thank you, God, for the world so sweet. Thank you, God, for the things we eat. Thank you, God, for the birds that sing. Thank you, God, for everything. Amen. 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 Dinner to the minute and ready to begin it. Amen. Uh, mutton pie again, Denise. Wait and see, Uncle. Soup first, anyway. Mmm, oh. oxtail. I can smell it. Mama has made it specially in your honor. Really? Oh, you shouldn't have gone to so much trouble. Oh, no, Mama has always taken and the trouble. Denise? This one is for Henry, dear. Daphne, my dear? Uh, I... Daphne doesn't take up stale soup. She has such a delicate digestion. Oh, so sorry, dear. No, no, Henry. I don't have it either. It's for you, just as Mama said. So kind. Yes. Daphne and Denise have to be careful. The mutton pie is their treat. <laughs> now, tell me what you think of this. Bought the cocoa. The damn thing's been buzzing around my face all day. Now where's it gone? Don't step back. Uh, Sarge, uh, could you spare me for the rest of the day? I've had this letter from Henry Russell. What I really need in here is some flypapers, the sort that poison the beggars. Yeah, the poor old chap's in trouble. It seems he's had an heart attack. Arsenic. Eh? 
Flypapers coated with arsenic. What was that about, Henry? An heart attack, Sarge. Oh, the doctor says he's lucky to be alive. He could have another one at any time. Well, that's rotten luck. Nice old boy. One of nature's gentlemen. Got you. What else did he say? Oh, well, he wants me to go and see him. Rygate? What for? Oh, some sort of favour he wants to ask of me. Must be thinking about a will. Needs an executor. Oh, no, it can't be that. It says here, if the worst happens, I've made the necessary arrangements. My dear wife and her family thoughtfully assisted me in drawing up my will before the wedding. Did they? Thoughtful by George, yes. But something must be bothering him. If he could spare me for the rest of the day. Can't let you go. Oh. Without support. We'll go together, drink up. Hmm. Don't think I will. Something floating on the top. Oh. Remember me, Mrs. Russell? Edward Thackeray, Henry's best man. And, uh, my uh, friend, uh, Mr. Cribb. Yes. Well, what can I do for you? Well, I got Henry's letter. Thought I'd better come down. How is he now? Nasty shock for both of you. Oh, yes. He's getting on well. Now, you'd better both come in. Thank you. Henry, you didn't tell me your friends from London were coming. No, dear. Oh, uh, that was my idea, ma'am. Hello, Henry. Edward. Mr. Cribb. Hello, Henry. I hope we're not putting you out. No, not in the least. Daphne will make us all a pot of tea, won't you, my pet? Tea? Just what the doctor ordered. So good of you to come. Well, this has been a terrible shock. When did it happen? Sunday evening. We went to Daphne's mother for dinner, and a very good dinner it was. What did you have? Soup, mutton pie, apple charlotte. Well, perhaps I overindulged. <laughs> I thought I had indigestion when we got home. I began to vomit, and then I felt dizzy, and I couldn't stand up. Daphne went and fetched Dr. Burden, and he had no doubt that I'd suffered a heart attack. Dr. Burden? I've known him for years. He's very good. But you never suffered from heart trouble before? No, never. Edward, I must ask you this before Daphne comes back. The doctor said that I ought to be prepared for another attack. Well, I know what he means. And, of course, I made a will when he arranged the settlement before the wedding. Everything goes to Daphne. It's little enough, poor child, but... There is one item. I'm sure she won't... Too much talking isn't good for you, Henry. No, dear. The gentleman can't stay long. We have to get your things ready. Ready for what, ma'am? We're moving him to Mama's. She's off to nursing back to health. I'm sure it isn't necessary. I'm very happy here being looked after by you, dearest. Oh, Henry, I simply can't manage alone. Especially when you invite your friends without telling me. Oh, well, if we're in the way at all, ma'am. Mm. What's the matter? Scalded my tongue. Is it a glass of cold water? Oh, well, I'll, I'll show you. Oh, dear. I do hope that he... What are you going to tell me in confidence, then, Henry? Oh, I see. Oh, I'm sorry, Sarge. All this way for some old moggy. Not at all. I think our services are needed here. What do you mean by that? Those ladies got Henry to make a will before the wedding, leaving everything to Daphne. And now he has a heart attack. Oh, put like that, it does sound a bit rum. I'm trying to recollect an out-of-turn remark made by Denise at the wedding breakfast. Mrs. Winter hushed her pretty fast about something being positive at the last word. Mrs. Winter's oxtail soup. You don't think she put... I'm going to see that doctor. You're going to visit the sexton of this parish. Ferret out everything you can about the curate and his family, where they came from, how long they've been here. Oh, that's an horrible idea. Why do you think they just... Let's have... leave the thinking till later, shall we, Thackeray? Unless you want a cat about the house. Everything quiet, Denise? Perfectly. Henry's in bed. Daphne's reading poetry to him. Uncle won't be back from choir practice for quite a while yet. Very well, then. Can you get Mrs. Beaton down from the shelf, dear? Turn to the soups. I think it's page 47. Oh, Mummy Ma, you are a caution. You must have picked these in the garden last summer. <laughs> I require six this time. 
enough to do the job without ruining the flavour. A fatal dose. We needn't go into that. As Mrs Beaton says, season according to taste. Why didn't we give him the full dose the first time? Well, it's obvious to me we could have saved all this trouble. But ease, we have to avoid the obvious. It would have been obvious to find much wealthier husbands for you and Daphne. But a poor, lonely old soul like Henry, who has very little to leave but a cottage and a few sticks of furniture, he can quit this world without upsetting a soul. If the job is done right. With a heart attack first to prepare people. That's my Denise. The bowl, please, dear. What's going on? Is Henry asleep yet? Yes. Seven standards of Don Juan and he's exhausted. <laughs> what are you making? Oh, can I help? You may as well. It has to be crushed to a powder. Use that. Oh! You odious animal. Denise, will you put the cat out, please, dear? Poor Pippin. Wouldn't you like to lick the bowl? Oh, Denise. Our uncle's coming. Quickly, then. He mustn't see us doing this. Anyone but uncle would have found out years ago. Him? Couldn't find a camel in a cow shed. What's wrong, Ezra? We should be taking choir practice. I know, I know. I said, onward, Christian soldiers, and the little blighters closed their books and went home. Next. Paper. Thank you. Shirt and trousers. Beg your pardon? Slip them off. I'm not one of your patients, Doctor. That's right. Everyone has a full examination the first time. I'm Sergeant. My Major dear Scott. chap, even if you're Mr. Gladstone himself, I'd still need to sound your chest. All I want is some information. How long have you known a Mr. Henry Russell? Mr. Henry Russell? Oh, many years. I inherited him from Dr. Owen when I took over the practice. This heart attack he's had. Did you expect it? Well, I don't see why that should concern you. Heart attacks are not uncommon among the elderly. Did he have good health before this? But these are confidential matters. What is all this about? Is it criminal to have a heart attack? My concern is to make sure he doesn't have another. Wrong, old chap. That's my concern. Now, if you want information from me, I'll be obliged if you obtain the proper authority. Next. And if you go to the house bothering my patient, I'll report you to the police. Oh, mister, wouldn't be fitting for me to talk about the curate behind his back. Oh, I understand that. I just thought but it'd you... be disloyal, wouldn't it? Sacrilegious. Oh, uh, yes. Well, I suppose it would. Oh, I say, there's a tanner on the floor. It uh, must have dropped out of someone's pocket when they were saying their prayers. Shall I hand it to you? Or shall I put it in the box by the door? Oh, well, no, I, I'll take care of it. What were you going to tell me about the curate, then? It's the winter, yeah. Well, I suppose it'd be all right to talk about him as a neighbour, setting aside his pastoral duties, sir. Thank you very much, sir. He's balmy. We can't get him to do a thing right, you know. I've seen him at a christening give the baby back to the wrong family. Nobody minded. Just thank the good Lord that he didn't drop it in the font. How long has he been here, Sexton? Eleven months. Ah, oh, not long, then. Eleven months too long. We've been waiting for him to pass on, you know. Yes, I heard he was a sick man. <laughs> Only up there. Oh, I mean pass on to another parish. It's the women that turned his brain, you know. No. A man of the cloth? Oh, I, I don't mean that way. I'm talking about his sister-in-law. Her two daughters. Formidable females, you know, them three. How he manages to keep them all on a curate stipend, I'm blessed if I know. They must have some savings, I suppose. Or some secret way of turning a penny. What do you mean by that, Sexton? I don't know. Don't suppose I ever will now. They'll be off to a new palace soon. You mark my words. Them sort don't stay long in one place. Have you any idea where they came from? St. Gabriel's Worthing. You can check up in Crockford's just to make sure. Yeah, what's all this interest in the winters? I'll take you to the station, then you're going back to London. What for, Sarge? I want you to see Mr. Blythe, the Home Office toxicologist. Toxic what? Poisons. Oh, glory. I'm interested in everything that produces the symptoms of a heart attack. Oh, poor old Henry. Severe chest pain, shortness of breath, Mr. Blythe will know. We're probably looking for a vegetable poison. So make a note of everything he tells you. I want a comprehensive list. I won't miss a thing, Sarge. Where are you going? Church. St. Gabriel's worthy.
Uh, my curate, you require information about him? No, sir, his predecessor. Oh, Ezra, you mean. Well, what do you want to know about him? How long was he with you, sir? A little over a year. He came from St. Jude's at Effingham. Highly recommended. <laughs> what is the church coming to when you can't trust the word of a fellow parson? He was a disappointment. Oh. Undeniably a character, though. You could say that for Ezra. How did you get rid of him, sir? You can't treat curates like the Death Watch Beetle, unfortunately. No, he resigned because of a family bereavement. A sad business. One of his nieces married our senior church warden, Jacob Dunn. A decent old stick, but far too old for her. It really was a case of May with December. That's his plaque over there. He died? A few weeks after the marriage, heart failure. And young Daphne was left a widow at 26. Daphne, you're not mistaken, sir. Absolutely not. A winsome lass. As soon after the funeral, her family moved away, and I'm not quite sure where they went to. Thank heavens I didn't have to write a testimonial for Ezra. And they came from Effingham. St. Jude's. having to make these again. Hair gone white and teeth not fine. Let Daphne be my valentine. Oh, you cat. Clear the table now, girls. It will be time for supper soon. Denise is asking me what he'd like. He's your husband. Henry. Henry. What can we get you for supper? Something warm, perhaps? Oh, I... I don't think so, dear. It's a little near bedtime for me, but Pippin would like his supper. Columbine, common buckthorn, foxglove, green elibore, lupin, lily of the valley. Lupin? Yeah, that's right. Breathing is depressed and there's a distinct slowing of the art. Yeah, do you want me to finish? After that, there's the poisonous fungi. No, it's hopeless. A pearl in a hailstorm. Hold on, Sarge. Haven't you forgotten something? What's that? Well, the curate, Uncle Ezra, he said they grow foxgloves in their garden. Always have done. Well, it's unlike you to overlook a vital clue like that. Foxgloves could prove very dangerous to the art. Three or four leaves crushed up in the oxtail soup could prove fatal. Haven't you forgotten something? What's that? Henry's still alive. All right, it could be uncommon clever. Small dose. Mild heart attack, doctor prepared for the worst. But did you look at that garden? There were toadstools everywhere. Lilies of the valley, lupins, for all we know, it's going to be a devil to pin down. Yeah. Let's hope for a stroke of luck. A what? Mama, it's got to be today. I can't endure any more of it. Daphne, my dear. Would you get Pippin his saucer of milk? Daphne, would you fetch my slippers? When all this is over, I'll drown that wretched animal myself. You'll do no such thing. We'll leave him behind when we move to Norfolk. Oh, Mama, tell us, please, can we finish off our Valentines today? Oh, Henry, and how are we this morning? Much better. I'm beginning to think of the inner man again. What's for lunch? Well, I thought I'd treat you again. You've paid no more visits to the house? The patient has fully recovered. Now, if you would kindly remove yourselves from my surgery. Have you had experience of poisoning before, Doctor? Poisoning? Common poisons from the garden, digitalis, that sort of thing. Powerful action on the heart. Look, if you have something to say to me, Sergeant, I'd be obliged if you'd come to the point. 
Let's take the case of three ladies in reduced circumstances, widow and two daughters. Their only means of support, a crackpot curate, not particularly good at his job. Now, in every parish, there are gullible old men, not specially rich, but living on their savings in cottages of their own. Enough, if it were left to the ladies, to keep the wolf from the door for a few months. Won't be long now, Henry. <laughs> Now, which old man isn't susceptible to the flutter of a female eye and the promise of some comfort in his declining years? So the pattern is established. A quick courtship, a settlement of all his possessions on the love of his life, followed by a wedding, followed by a heart attack, followed by a funeral. The wedding and the funeral conducted by the curate, the heart attack by the ladies. Do you have evidence of all this? Not enough yet, sir, but I've seen the graves of three old men who contracted marriages to the winter girls. And you believe they were all poisoned? Possibly. How do you prove a thing like this? Exhumation and post-mortem, but that takes time. And still may not be conclusive. If digitalin was used, I think you'll find that there are no characteristic symptoms. who came to the wedding. Mr. Thackeray? No, the other one. Mr. Cribb. What does he want? Henry, did you invite them here again? Take Henry into the kitchen, dear, and take his soup. He can drink it in there. Come along, Henry. Hmm? Oh, Mr. Cribb, what a surprise. We were just about to have lunch. I interrupted you? Good. What do you mean? Where's Henry, ma'am? He's in there. He's not to be disturbed. Capital. It's you three I came to see. We three? Well, I don't think Uncle Ezra was in on this, was he? You could light a fire under him and he wouldn't notice. In on what, Mr. Cribb? The sudden deaths of three old gentlemen who married your daughters. William Lamb, four years ago at Whitney. James Beresford at Effingham and Jacob Dunn at Worthing. Mr. Beresford was married to you, miss. The other two were husbands of your sister. Well, we know this. <laughs> they were ancient. Decrepit. We sacrificed ourselves to please them. You murdered them. Oh, that's a wicked slander, Mr. Cripp. What are you going to do about it? Invite me to lunch? Oxtail soup, perhaps? Or is it mutton pie? I don't know what you mean. With a dash of something added. Mama, why have you come here? And what do you want? Perhaps an accommodation, Mr. Cribb. Detective Sergeant Cribb, Miss Scotland Yard. Oh, how melodramatic. What do you want us to do? Go down on our knees and confess? You'll find nothing by disturbing the dead. I knew it was all going to go wrong this time. I knew it. You can't charge us without stronger evidence. I am in the process of obtaining that, ma'am. What's he doing? Digging up a few plants. Where's your pity? Have you ever tried to live on a curate's wage, doing piecework until midnight to make up? My pity's with the victims, miss. You chose them well. They had so little that it mattered to no one if they died, except the happy widow with a modest windfall. Where is Henry? You don't propose to tell him. He wouldn't believe you. You're quite right, of course. You've been very clever. Common poisons from the garden are the very devil to detect in post-mortem. I could get an order to exhume your previous victims, and I probably will. But I doubt if it'll provide enough evidence for the prosecution. You can't get the proof. But I rather think the weddings will stop. Dr. Burden knows my suspicions, and he'll be watching. We'll all be watching. And if anything happens to Henry... But he's an old man. He could go at any time. You better start praying, ma'am, or you'll be telling your story to a judge and jury. The soup! Daphne. <gasps> Henry, you haven't touched your soup. Oh, dear, you forgot to let me have a spoon. It's all right, it's all right. Volunteering some evidence, ma'am? 
You stupid girl. Oh, I'm not so sure. She's given us a chance to test the soup to see if it's safe. A spoon, if you please, miss. Now, if it isn't poisoned, I shall owe you all an apology. Who's going to taste it, Mrs. Russell? Miss Denise. Mrs. Winter, let's have the opinion of the cook. Oh, it's gone cold. I think I'll get a little more from the pot. No, 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 ma'am. That's the soup we're testing. No, Mama. That's not much help, miss. What'll I do for evidence now? I've got to build a cast iron case for prosecution. It could take years. Years while you ladies wait, not knowing whether we found enough to convict you. Years that Daphne must devote to keeping Henry in good health and happiness. Because if I hear one whisper that he's not. Oh, Daphne, we'll share the work. He can stay with us as long as you like. But his father lived to be 91. Over 25 years of Henry. And the cat. A life sentence. Dr. Burden will be calling once a fortnight. Just to check. Daphne, get Henry his lunch and pour him a glass of stout. It's strengthening. This will be worse than hard labor. But a labor of love, miss. <laughs> 